I'm hitting record. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Dave here. And um, what we're going to be trying to do is get some of this wiring done. So make sure that you have this. Uh, download it from xsimulator.net. Get yourself a marker, like a yellow marker. Every wire that we hook up, we're going to be tracing across this with the yellow marker so we know what we've done and what we haven't done. There was a video that I put out a little while ago kind of explaining the stuff that you're going to need. Now, you need one of these. This is going to help check. So this is a ohm meter or continuity tester, multimeter. Um, so what it does, it's going to assist you in making sure that you have, after you wire it and solder it together, making sure that, um, that it's actually making a good connection. Now, a couple things. I'm going to try to breeze through some of this. Now you see these. Okay. So these little connectors, you can get them on, you know, off of Amazon, something like that. And you can use these to go between the Arduino, the Arduino and the IBT. Um, basically, you'll be just shoving this little end into whatever port on the Arduino and you're thinking, well, it's going to make a good connection. It'll probably work. Probably just fine. But these are motion simulators. Who knows where you're going to be putting this thing and how many times you're going to move it. The biggest problem I've had is when I first started out, I did do that. I put connectors on the IBTs just like this. And I put the little pin connectors into the Arduino, just like that. And it worked pretty good for a while. Then I started getting some weird, random stuff going on. And it would only happen every now and again. And if I reseated a pin, everything worked fine. I don't know why, but it, it, it really started to bother me. Because every couple races, all of a sudden, either the traction loss wouldn't work or something wouldn't work. And all I had to do is wiggle one of those pins and it worked. So I said, from now on, I'm going to go ahead and use solder. I'm just going to solder right to the bottom of this and right to the bottom of the IBT. It's been working perfect. Um, probably three years now working um, since I switched over to a fully soldered or to a fully soldered setup. Now, it, now, if you do do the soldering, you know, there is a chance you could screw it up. You could overheat one of these things and it could uh, ruin the chip. So you got to be careful. But as long as you just heat it up enough to get the solder going, you follow my steps, you'll probably be fine. Now, I do have a lot of IBTs and a lot of these different Arduinos. I've never messed up one of them, but there is a possibility you could. So just beware. And I'm going to show you how to solder it, but you can use this diagram to uh, use those pin connectors like these ones. You can use those. Now, you can find them on uh, Amazon, probably the best best place to find them. But what, what I'm going to be doing is... I'm going to be using solder. So we're going to be using 6040, 6040 rosin core solder. You can get that on Amazon. I'm trying to put a link to all these different things on uh, the description part of the page. All right, so let's jump into this. Okay, before we just jump in on all this stuff, you want to make sure that you're your Uno is actually actually does work before we do anything to it. So we're gonna take it out of the package and we're gonna plug it into the computer. Um, or just go ahead and plug your USB right in there. Um, let's plug it into the computer. So as soon as you find a USB port to plug it into, you plug it in, it should start blinking. Now the program that's in it right now is a one second on and one second off 
blink. We're going to modify that real quick just to you know, make sure that, that everything is talking. And I'll show you exactly where you can find this information on Windows 11. So if you go to System here, you go to, oops, just go to System. And we go to Bluetooth and Devices. And then click right over here to this little arrow. And it's going to list the COM ports if you've got more than one type of thing plugged up. Now, I'm going to unplug it. And it went away. Plug it back in. And there it is, right there. All right, so you definitely want to make sure that this is actually working before we do anything to it. Because... If it's not working and you do a bunch of stuff to it, you're A, you don't know if it worked in the first place and it's definitely not gonna work after it doesn't work. So plug it in, make sure it, the light blinks, um, make sure that you can see it on the computer and then we can start wiring because we're going from the known, which is this does work, to the unknown. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one of these three motors and wire it up. And then you'll be able to follow along for the second motor and the third motor. But So we're going to need the motor, the wires that go to the IBT. We're going to need the uh, Hall Effect potentiometer or a potentiometer. This is a Hall Effect. And as you can see on the back, I've already got it wired, but I'm going to I'll disconnect these wires or just use a different one. We're going to be starting with all of these connections right here the red and the black now the, apparently <laughs> i noticed this just now they that little dot right there that should be black uh but whatever i downloaded it this is from xsimulator.net and that is the negative post all of these are black so let's start by wiring a little bit of the red and black to the arduino we're going to start right here. Red is positive, 5 volts coming off the Arduino, and we're going to be using this little, this little circuit board to uh, solder all the red connections. So the red going to the Hall effects, the red going to pin 7 of the IBTs, all of them, pin 7. And then we're going to do the same thing with the black, ground to pin eight of the IBT, ground to one of the connections on, well, it's gonna say ground. So that's the, this wire right here. So wire it to each of the uh, Hall Effect sensors and then ground, well, there we go. So let's do that first right off the bat. So I've selected some of this black and red uh, telephone wire. I also have a whole mess of this stuff that I found on the ground. I showed you that in the last episode. What we're going to do is strip off just a little bit of the black and red and solder it right to this. So I'm just going to take um, my stripper and I'm just going to take a little bit of this off. Now it's important that you do use a stripper for its intended purpose. Um, basically you're gonna be, you don't wanna nick the ends of these wires. See if you nick it and you bend it back and forth a bunch of times, not even too many times. I mean, this is not nicked so it's not breaking, but if it had a nick in it, it would you bend it back and forth a couple of times, it would just snap off. So. I know I got the stripper set to the right thing. We're gonna go ahead and do that again. And just take your time. You don't have to rush this stuff. You just need a little bit of time without a bunch of distractions going on to get this kind of stuff done. I got two of them done. Try to keep your hands clean. Um, if you got a bunch of grease and stuff or 
whatever. Try to wash your hands at least. You could wear gloves. I'm not going to do that. But we just want a little bit off of each end. And we're going to poke it through here. And the black wire, I put it on one side. Okay, so I'm poking it through. And I'm just going to bend it down. And the red, I'm going to do the same thing. Just poke it through and bend it down. So we've got this kind of thing going on. There's the other side. We're going to go ahead and solder these down um, just to keep it nice and still. You could probably want to use one of these just to hold everything in place, set it up. Do So every little connection is important. So you just want to make sure it's good. All right, let's get this one going. All right, so the first connections, I've got it in here. I have can turn on my light so I can see a little bit better. But basically, you want to be able to, to get the solder flowing hot on the uh, soldering iron. And I need a little wet rag. Just wipe it down a little bit. See how shiny that is? To heat it up. Should be a good connection. We'll do the other one. All right, so let's take this out of the little vice thing. Trying to make sure that you can see this. But we have, we have a, a good amount of solder on there. That's all you need. You don't need it to be wad on there. So we have the red going to one side and the ground going to the other side. Now this is real basic. This is going to be our connection right in the in this area where all the reds are connected. They're going to go on this side. Where all the blacks are connected or all the black uh, wires. That's going to go on this wire here, this black wire. So let's get the rest of this done. Just we'll get a couple wires on. And we'll see where we're at. We know all of these, the Arduino and the IBTs, they're all going to be living in this little case. So we don't need to have, you know, 50 feet of wire. You just need a little bit. And I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, we got our vent holes, ins and outs, everything should be, this should work just perfect. So if you're following along, we're going to do this wire here from one of the IBTs. We're going to make a connection to this red thing. And the red thing is right here. So I run the wire up into it, bend it over, holding everything in place. And that would be all you need. Now, you don't want to wiggle it. Or anything right now we we'll just let it because it'll it might make a cold solder joint so we just want to leave it i'm going to take one more red wire and shove it up through the hole hopefully and i'm going to bend it over put it in here make that second connection Get it hot, touch the wire, and there we go. All right, so you can see there's a pretty big glob of solder on here, uh, but that's because I'm like halfway blind. But So we've got two wires hooked to it right now, two red wires hooked to the red thing, the red rail. And those two wires are just red. They're going to go to two different things. One is going to go to the IBT. And one is going to go to uh, one of the Hall effects. Let me wire up the black ones. And that way we have the return from the Hall effect going to the black rail. And return from one of the IBTs. Just going to heat the solder up. All right, that should be good. We got one more to go. Yep, 
There we go. Put, put that in. Hold the wire. So these little tools kind of help you out a lot. I bend over the wire. Like I said, you don't need the most expensive stuff, but you do need some stuff. Heat it up. And that should be good. Now we've got a positive rail, five volts coming off of here. And we got the ground on that side. You end up clipping these little extra wires off, or you can leave them on. As long as they're not touching anything else, you should be fine. Uh, let's just continue on. Let's go ahead and, and mark a little bit of this out on the uh, wiring diagram. All right, so for right now, what we've done is we've basically done a little bit of this. The first one we're going to do is uh, positive to pin 7 of the first IBT. So I'm going to go ahead and connect one of these red ones to pin 7 of the first IBT. And there, it kind of looks the way it's supposed to. Like I said, these wires don't need to be this long. I just make them this long. You can tuck the wires inside the, uh, the little plastic holder. So it should be all right. I'm just going to go ahead and take one of these wires, strip it off. All right, so we're going to look at the IBT. I got the IBT up here. Pin 7 is labeled 7. It's this one. Pin 8 is that one. So 7 is going to be a red. 8 is going to be a black. Okay, so the other pins, let's not worry about those now. Let's just hook up the 7 and the 8. All right, so I can tell you one thing. The older I get, the harder it is for me to even see. So I don't know how many more of these videos I'm going to do. But I just want to heat this thing up. Should be okay. So I'm taking a look. That's the best way I can say that, yes, we are on 7. So the same thing we need to do is for 8. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get one of the black wires, wrap it around pin 8, and put a little bit of solder on there. May have overdone it on that one, but it looks like a good joint. And I'll blame any problems on my vision. Okay, so what we want to do, let's wipe that off. We want to tin this. And then we can use it. We're just we're going to wrap it around pin um, 8, and we should be able to be ready to solder. Okay, so it's wrapped around pin 8, and in a way that it won't touch pin 7. I heat it up. Now there's tutorials on how to solder. Probably from people who can see much better than me. Just want to get it to go. All right, so another tool that you can use, let me see where, there it is. So something like this, um, just a magnifying glass, but I can look on here. Wow. Well, they're not touching. It looks pretty crappy, but they're not touching. So do not hire me to do this because I'm way too old to be doing this, but it's a good connection. And now we can make our first little uh, yellow marks on here. Uh, pin 7 and pin 8 on the IBT. We're going to go ahead and make pin this connection here, highlighting it in yellow, and this connection here, highlighting it in yellow. All right, so that's the basics on the first step. What we want to do is just go wire by wire, and we'll finish this one little part. And then as long as you do it 
very slow and check, um, I think you'll be fine. Just do one set of wires at a time. Uh, mark them down with your pen. That way you know you already did it. You could check it with a, a continuity tester. If you want to, we'll take a look at how to do that. Because I know that not everybody, and I mean, this might be your first time even looking at any of this kind of stuff. So let's just, let's just do that real quick. That way you can see kind of what I'm talking about. You guys can skip ahead if you've done this a million times, but not everybody has. So we want to take our digital multimeter or multimeter, and we want to set it on ohms, which is that horseshoe shaped thing, or the buzzer, that's that little speaker looking thing, that white thing, or the diode, which is like continuity. Um, it's a, that's a diode sign. But anyway, what happens when you touch the red and black wires together, it's going to make a sound. Just like that. And I'll try to do this. I'm going to touch them together and it, it will say zero ohms. I'm going to touch it together. Wait for it. Wait for it zero okay so it's saying zero ohms which means there is no resistance in there if there was a resistor in there some some type of uh what they call a resistor it's a little component looks kind of like a little tube with some colors on it it would sh the this meter would show what that resistance is so you can actually check your um resistors but we're not putting any of those in on this project Okay, so all we're going to do is I'm going to listen for the sound. It's kind of hard to see this when I'm shooting, but I want to I want to check the continuity between pin 7, which is the red, uh, and this over here, which if I touch it, that's fine. Now let me see if I've got continuity or a short between red and black. I do not. Now I'm going to check pin 8 to make sure that it goes to the black. And it does. So if you have problems and you're trying to figure it out, use a magnifying glass to see if any of the components are touching. Uh, and if you glob solder over everything and they're touching and it's not going to work. So you're going to have to heat it up again, get rid of that solder. There's a couple ways to do that. You could, you could uh, use a sucker. That's like this thing. I can't remember where I got it, but you kind of press, you load it up and you press the button. Press the button and it sucks air. It'll suck that solder into here and away from your component. So you can do it again. But ideally, the thing that you want to use to make sure things aren't touching is this. Um, remember how we did pin 7 and we pin 7 to pin 8? Make sure that they're not touching. This is the way to do it. So you don't need an expensive one. Just get a cheap one. But you are going to need one. So 10 bucks well spent. Or if you do a lot of weird stuff with electronics, get a little bit better one. I've got a couple different types. This is, you know, just something you're going to use. I would recommend it anyway. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do now is, is pretty easy. We're going to be on the IBT, and we're going to be on pin 3 and 4. Pin 3 and 4 are hooked together. Come all the way over here. It's the green wire. Green is going all the way to right here which is one, two, three, four, four pins in, one, two, three, four. See that little tilde symbol? Oh my gosh, I hope you can see it. Well, it's gonna go to this pin. That's four pins in, this is like transmit and receive. Um, number two is a digital pin. This is a pulse width modulation pin, so it's gonna go to pin three on the Arduino. It's gonna come from three and four, and these are are going to be green colors. So let's do something fun. Let's find a green wire. So I've got this 
green and white. I've also got a black and a green. Eh, we just need a green. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. I'm going to cut it off. And go through the tedious task of un unwinding these two. And that way I can just have a, a green wire. All right, so this is green, at least, and it's green and white, but it's still, to me, it's green. Now, just so you know, I have had a couple comments that these type of tutorials are unwatchable. Well, you know what? <laughs> what can you do? It's, it's, a, it's kind of a difficult subject to do live or, you know, and record it and all that stuff, so I do my best. I don't know about the unwatchable part. If I was trying to learn how to do something, I'd like to see somebody slow down enough that I could understand what they're doing. I mean, to me, I, and this is me, I just, if I go, if I'm going to spend the time to click on something and watch it, I don't want to just have somebody just go, oh, boom, movie magic, it's done. Because, you know, hey, I've been here 15 minutes already. And it ain't done. No, not at all. But it's getting there step by step, and I know it's right. So let's take this green wire. And we're going to strap it right in here. Oh, God, the thing's hooked. I'm going to strap it across pin three and four on the IBT. All right, so I have the tinned wire right here. Going across pins three and four. Now all I got to do is solder that into place. I don't know if I, I hit record or pause or whatever. I may not have got that last little part on film. You know, I did have a 10 times jeweler's loop. Now, one of the guys at ACF, I think he's a jeweler. jeweler. So he would know what I'm talking about. Basically, it's just a magnifying glass, 10x, and it's only about this big, so you put it up to your eye, and then you move the, the piece a little bit closer. It's a heck of a lot better than this. The main thing is you have continuity, and that it's not a cold solder joint. So what I could do is just strip off this end real quick, get out my multimeter, and check to make sure that I did a, a good job. Um, sometimes you don't do a good job. So I have the, the end of the green wire. I've got one of the leads on that. Touch it together just to make sure it's working. I touch it to pin three, okay. Touch it to pin four, okay. Touch it to any of the other pins, no problem. Touch it to four, touch it to three. And okay, despite how it may look, I've got continuity, and that's the only thing I care about. Now, the other end of this green wire is going to go over to the Arduino. Um, try to make them about similar lengths. That way you can coil them up or just shove them somewhere. So now let's finish this green wire up. Going to pulse with uh, modulation, well, the pin three of the Arduino. So we're going to go right here and we're going to go to the bottom of the Arduino. So what we're going to do is clean this off a little bit with a little bit of acetone just to get it clean. We're going to tin the wire and then put it on there briefly. It should solder right away. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. Like I said, it doesn't take long. It just takes a second. Let's see if we can see. So that is on pulse width, or pin number, pin number one, two, three, four from the end, but actually that starts with zero, one, two, and three. So it's on the right one. And now we have... A connection at least uh, one pin um, the pulse width pin from the IBT to the Arduino and we have power to the IBT so we can make a cross out on the
the sheet. All right, so we can take this pin three and four. We got them connected together, running all the way down here, all the way around here, coming over here and connected to that one. So we only got two more to do and then we'll be wired up. All right, so on the sheet, it looks like pin one is a blue and pin one is comes over here and hooks to actually right there pin two on the uh it's a digital pin on the arduino remember it starts at zero zero one two and then we just did three so it's going to go to pin two just follow along on on the diagram and it, mark one wire at a time take your time doing this because you don't want to rush through it it get globs of solder everywhere and have nothing work in fact you could do this one motor at a time that might if it's your first time doing it the wiring kind of, i mean even though it looks a little bit simple it could get a little bit overwhelming so we're going to take that blue wire or find a blue wire, strip it out, and run that right now. All right, so, you know, the only reason I'm doing this color code thing, it's just, it's going to help y'all follow along. Plus, it, it'll help me um, if I have to troubleshoot something later. So, if I know it's a blue wire, even though, you know, it's blue with a little white little bit on it, it's not a big deal. I just need to, uh, you know, get it tin the end and uh, keep working. So the connection on the IBT is to pin one. Same thing, I'm gonna take the, this little pair of needle nose and I'm gonna bend it into like a little circle. And when I get it on pin one, I'm gonna crank it down. So I've got it on pin one right here. I just want to get some solder on there. Should be good. You don't need to touch it and hold it on there much longer than it takes. We'll take a look at this. Yeah, she's on there. Yeah, not a problem. So we're going to take the other end of this and go right to the Arduino. We're going to leave a little bit of slack here so we can get uh, pin two. Now you can see that the bottom one, I haven't done it yet, but it's the bottom one is pin two. We've got pin one blue. All right, I have it sitting on there. Should be stable. I've got it tinned. Yeah, it's not the best solder job in the world, but it's on there. One more wire to go. That's from pin two, and it's a between the IBT and the Arduino. So I'm looking at this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and pick, pick a, mar a yellow uh, marker and just go across the blue one that we just hooked up. The next type of wire is like a purple color. So pin two, it's purple. It's gonna go all the way over here. I think it's to one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. I think it's five, six, seven, eight, to pin nine, I think so. Hard for me to see this, but I'll make sure it's the right one. Well, out of all this massive wires here, it doesn't seem like I got a purple one. I could do a, so a blue and a black, and that might suffice for purple. So, yeah, uh, it's not purple, but that's okay. So, guys, I know you're, you're watching and you're wondering, oh, my gosh, there's so much work. 
it's not it's not that much work um it's a little bit of work and you do but you know what you're doing it yourself and you're saving like a ton of money and so you get some pride out of you know making something yourself and making it work so i'm just gonna go ahead and tin this up it's important to tin these because you don't want to be waiting around with a uh, wire that's not tinned oh, that works um, you don't want to be waiting around on the component, heating the component more than you need to. That could cause a problem, and it could it, it could do damage to either the IBT or your or your Arduino. And you don't want that. I I've not had any problems yet, but that's yet. So you could use those pins like I showed you before. Um, these little connector things, you could use those. It's going to work with that. You can do it this way, be one and done. Never have to worry about it not making connection. The only thing is if you if you nick one of these somewhere, it could break. And it But then again, you got the ohm meter. You could use that to troubleshoot. I've had to do that a couple times on tape. But, uh, all right, let me get this one run. All right, so you could use anything you want to hold it in place. I have that new purpley black wire running to pin number nine right here. And I held it down with just a bit of uh, tape. Just hold it in place, make it a little bit easier for me. It's tinned, it's ready to go. That should be good. I'll let it cool down a little bit. I'll take the tape off. Take a look at these two things. Uh, I'm on pulse width. Well, I got, I'm on pin nine. That's where that, that new wire is going to go. That purpley black one. And the other, the green and the blue. All hooked up. So this part. All we want to do is kind of duplicate it a few times. And we got this purpley black one. Going over to pin number nine. Okay, so basically this section is complete. The only other thing we need to do is to be running uh, one of the red wires over to one of the Hall Effect sensors. And then a black wire to the Hall Effect sensor. Off the V out of the Hall Effect sensor, we want to run a yellow wire. I think that is to A0. Well, you get the point. So I just want to make sure that uh, you can ask your questions to me. A little bit of wiring going on right now. Uh, but, but we've got it well in hand. So... Let me see. Okay, so on your on your Hall Effect sensor, you've got ground. You've got ground, which is uh, you're gonna that's gonna be the black wire. You've got V out, so in this case, it's gonna be the yellow wire that's gonna hook from here to Arduino A zero, and then you have the hot side or plus five volts. And what I was saying about these Hall Effect sensors, they can spin around and around and around. So even if you have a mechanical problem where it's not set up right, this isn't going to break. On a 10K wire wound or a wire wound one, they can just, that's the physical limit. I twist it, that's the physical limit. So if this is plugged in and your motor spins more than that, it's probably going to break this off or break something. I don't like using these. And they could be noisy from what I've heard. So try to use what I show on the screen. These are Hall Effect sensors. They are, I don't know, 26 bucks right now. Sometimes you can't get them. So 
if you see it and you got enough money to get three of them, get three. Um, <laughs> they're, they're really good. And, and I'll show you how to set that up in the software, how, how this thing will read the position of the motor. It'll send the signal back to the Arduino and the Arduino will talk to this thing and tell the motor to move a little bit more or, oh, you're, you know, back off or whatever. This, this is the thing that can, supposed to handle 40, up to 42 amps at 12 volts. Um, their, the voltage range doesn't go, I think it goes to 27. So you're cool with 24 volts going into this. That's not what we're doing, but I have run 24 into this. Uh, just look at the spec sheet on the thing, or you can just ask me the question. I think I have it copied down. And uh, so anyway, on this whole project, we're using 12, and that's it. Well, I wanted to get some video out to you guys, some wiring video. And this is all I'm going to do today. We just follow along, get, you know, get basically set up, start running some wires. They don't need to be terribly long, but do not make them too short because you need enough room to move the components around so that, you know, it's just not a pain in your butt. So we're going to continue on this series. It's going to actually probably take a couple, couple more videos to do this. Um, by next time, hopefully we'll get at least the components in and we'll be starting to wire up these fuses to uh, the motors. We're going to leave these off for right now. So if you do run your wires to them, these are actually going to go... Okay, so, so depending on where your box is. Now I'm going to be mounting this box off to the side of the rig and not on the rig. So it's going to be a little bit different for me that these wires that are going to the Hall Effect pot or Hall Effect uh, sensors, they're going to be... A little bit longer than normal. Normally I have everything kind of crammed into one space but these are going to run out to the front motors and one is going to run to the traction loss motor. So it's going to, the wires are going to be, I don't know, ah, four or five feet long, something like that. It's not a problem but if you do wire up these things you can just cut them, put a splice in to connect the end like like this okay so this one's already wired up it i've i think the wire was probably eight foot long worked pretty good um not really a big deal to cut it then you just put in a you splice in an extra wire <laughs> i don't even know where i'm going with that all right so hold on all right guys i'm gonna wrap it up right here I think that's about enough wiring for an old guy like me for today. Um, but, you know, go ahead, knock yourself out. Just do one thing at a time. Use your continuity meter or tester to make sure that you made the right connection. Because it, it would have been easy to put that last one on. Instead of on nine, I could have made it on ten just because it's hard to see in this uh this room even though i've got a few more lights but you know you make mistakes but you can fix it or at least you can test to make sure you're you're doing the right thing it's not that hard just take your time don't rush don't be doing other things like mowing the lawn and then come in and try to do this because you need you need to concentrate just a little bit you don't need to concentrate a terrible amount but maybe put some music on i don't know i don't have any music running right now but um anyway so hey look at the screen so at the acf we are we get to design our own cars this time um and our own paint jobs anyway and this is something we do from time to time we've done it a couple times we're going to be running this ford capri an 1800 it's kind of drifty um, i made my logos in photoshop and i have a series on how to do that tell me if you want to do another series on how to do that and i will um, it's not that hard i've taught a lot of people how to do that and i got your back so
Take it easy, guys.